Today on Arizona Highways Television, up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's an ATV with wings. And later, shooting down my fears and hitting the proverbial bullseye at Ben Avery Target Center. Put the popcorn in the microwave and grab the easy chair. Arizona Highways Television starts right now. One of the most amazing things about Arizona is our gorgeous big blue skies. And that's probably one of the reasons why so many people like to fly here. Hi everyone, I'm Robin Sewell. Now, if you wanna fly like a bird, you know, that feeling of being totally unencumbered, then you may wanna take off, right Sunny? And one of these three wheel trikes. Now Sunny does not come along with the ride, but the best way I can describe it, it's like a flying ATV. It's just before sunup near Lake Pleasant, and Denny Reed's getting ready for his morning ritual. What I like about flying early in the morning is that the air is still. The cool, crisp air has been settled all night. What the air does at different altitudes and the smells and the feels, the early morning is worth the cup of coffee and the alarm clock. Denny, who owns trikeschool.com, flies what are known as trikes. Riprap. What you're looking at is a essentially a powered hang glider, but extremely heavy duty and, and very, very, very high tech. Denny's love affair with trikes started long ago. In fact, he remembers flying down the sidewalk on three wheels. So essentially now he is still riding trikes, just not on sidewalks. Before it's anything else, it's a glider. So a lot of times we do shut the engine off just for a gliding experience. It's very stable all on its own. They're very simple to fly. You push out to go up or go slow. You pull in to go fast or come down. And then you just turn to the side through energy management. So how long do you have to train to pilot one of these? Uh, the FAA requires you to do 15 hours of school and I can have someone done in about a week and a half. Denny imports the trikes from five different countries and sells them to different manufacturers and buyers in the United States. We're here nine months out of the year. Uh, we do introductory flights, uh, we teach people to fly, we sell planes, help people assemble them and whatnot. I hope this doesn't hurt your feelings, but they are kind of weird looking. They look a little bit like a lawnmower on, you know, <laughs> with, with wings. Well, Robin, that's, that's actually a compliment because um, you've upgraded us from flying weed eater to a lawnmower, <laughs> so I'll take it. Well, it's a powered hang glider. It's a very, very, very nice flying lawnmower, um, complete with a ballistic parachute that if deployed actually saves a whole airplane. Okay, and um, how about the people inside the airplane? It shakes them right out. Okay, I'm great, just kidding. good to know. It's, it saves the crew and it saves the airplane as well. The type of person that would fly a trike or want to experience it, um, I don't know if I would go so far as to call them adrenaline junkie. They seem more like calculated risk people. I've wanted to fly since I was a kid. They're really nice because you actually feel the wind on your fingertips and it's, I think it's as close to flying like a bird as you're going to get without growing feathers. Dustin has been learning to fly from Denny and recently purchased a trike to start his own business, flying people on aero trekking adventures in South America. I'm actually working on pontoons so uh, I'll be able to land and take off on the water. Denny has been doing aero truck adventures for years, flying people on fishing trips, sightseeing in Sedona, and ghost hunting trips near Wikiup. I've always had buck fever as to what's over the next hill, next mountain. This just looked like a, a perfect tool for finding out. Someone once said, the engine is the heart of an airplane, but the pilot is its soul. So if these three-wheeled flying machines can take Denny over the next hill, then I would say Denny has found his soulmate. One, two, three, segue. Segway. Motto of our tours, we do not fall, okay? And nobody goes down. Wayne Frederick started wrangling Jeep tours back in the late 70s, switched to Segway tours a few years later, 
but was restless to get people off the pavement and back out to the wilderness. Being a tour guide, doing off-road jeeping, I finally, if I could get them out in the desert away from cars and curbs and give them a desert experience. It's not a city slicker tour, it's an off-road Segway adventure here on the Fort McDowell Yavapai Nation. So we feel we're very lucky. We got 25,000 acres all to ourselves out here. Segway Desert Tours is part of Fort McDowell Adventures, and no matter which trail you take out here, you're under the looming gaze of the Four Peaks. These things are pretty easy. They take about seven minutes before your pro circuit. Every tour starts with a lesson. Skills come quickly. The more relaxed you are, the better out there, and you have a better time if you're not a white knuckle rider. But these things are really easy. You don't have to hold on tight. They're super sensitive, so that means you don't have to muscle these handlebars around. You can just barely hold on and get it to turn. You can go to, a, you can get it going really fast. We don't want folks to think of uh, Segway as a uh, motor car or, or a race car. Segway is an easy way to get around without walking or hiking. You're standing on a human transporter, so you're like gliding like Star Wars through the desert. You can get it going really fast if you want, and then all you got to do to stop is you can squat. You can. There's several different ways you can stop this thing. You can just lift your toes up, that stops you. You can be cruising along and if you want to stop, you just lean back a little bit, that's another way. Stopping is important, not just for staying in control, but for getting a closer look at things like this majestic saguaro cactus. Is there danger out there? Sure, when you get cocky and maybe feel tempted to wander off on your own. We have wildlife, we have things that could hurt you. You're with professional guides, we go in one line. We have rattlesnakes, we have herds of wild horses, we have maverick cattle out here, so we're on the look. We want to see this wildlife, okay? So that's why you're with us. This is Sunny. This is Sunny. Now, Can you say hi? has Sunny ever been up in the plane before? Not yet, um, but uh, you know, she's still uh, she's still finishing up ground school. Sonny, you're a little bit like me. You kind of like to keep your feet on the ground, yeah. right? She would uh, she would she would definitely fly, <laughs> but um, uh, she's a uh, probably a better mechanic. <laughs> this is the ultimate postcard from the edge. One picture says it all. So how do you put such majestic beauty into words? You don't. You just have to come here and experience it. Arizona is the Grand Canyon State. It is our pride and joy. And one look at this blindingly spectacular place, and you'll know why more than four million people each year come here to see for themselves this magnificent wonder of the world. And like the mark it makes on the earth, it will leave a mark on your imagination forever. When I first saw the Grand Canyon, I almost passed out. Uh, so I just, I lost my breath is what happened to me. <laughs> the Colorado River below cuts its way through the land just the way it has for millions of years. A lot of people don't know this at one time. There was another mile of rock above us that has since eroded away. Standing along the railing, peering deep into this massive gorge, you will be moved in a way that is just plain indescribable. It's uh, sometimes overpowering uh, to see the, the differences as it changes over time, the lighting as it changes with the clouds and, uh, and the uh, shadows in the canyon. It's a continuous show of colors and patterns as the sun moves across the sky. It's a mystical sight to behold. Behind me are Arizona's Vermilion Cliffs, sheer, magnificent, and hundreds of feet high. Remote and unspoiled. This 280,000 acre national monument is a million years in the making, yet not as well known as the Grand Canyon or Bryce Canyon. 
It's located just south of the Utah border off 89A and just a few miles from Lake Powell. It's named for its brilliant color, complements of the red iron oxide. There are no paved roads in the monument, meaning its beauty will be preserved for generation after generation. Pipe Spring National Monument. Pipe Spring became a national monument in 1923. As the name implies, Pipe Spring is a water source. There's been water here for thousands of years and it's attracted different groups of people through, throughout time. The uh, ancestral Puebloans farmed and hunted right around the spring here, and so did the Kaibab Paiutes, and their reservation completely surrounds the monument today. And then in the 1850s and 60s, Mormon pioneers started coming up and across the Arizona Strip, and they came upon the water. It was a stopping point on the way from those Arizona settlements to St. George. And the first temple, Mormon temple, that was finished out, he, out in Utah was in St. George. And so uh, Mormon couples would travel to that temple to be married in the temple. And so the, the route that went right along the Vermilion Cliffs that are up behind us here became known as, well, it was the Old, old Kaibab Wagon Road or the Honeymoon Trail. It, it was kind of like a hotel in some aspects, the people who were, were traveling across here on the Arizona Strip. So um, the people who were here had to, whenever anybody came, they had to welcome them into their home, um, find a place for them to stay, find a place for them to sleep. As with any um, contact with white people and Native Americans, um, <clears throat> there, was, there was some conflict and trying to mix these two very different cultures um, didn't work so well with the Paiutes. Uh, the Paiutes were very, very good at living off of the land. Um, we no you noticed the uh, Paiute structures that we came by, uh, they're called cons, and it's just kind of a brush hut. So wherever they went, they could use the things that they had to make a shelter for themselves. They didn't make stone buildings like we have behind here. So um, when the pioneers started building this building, it was probably very, very strange to them. The Paiutes um, definitely got pushed off of the good watering sources, the good places to have a garden, the better places to hunt. As the pioneers came in, they wanted those places too. it reaches high into the sky. It is indeed the famous fountain of Fountain Hills. The fountain is said to be the world's tallest at 560 feet high. The fountain has been delighting visitors for nearly 30 years and has even made its way into the Guinness Book of World Records. Nearly 7,000 gallons of water per minute is pumped through an 18-inch nozzle. So just how high is 560 feet? That's about 10 feet higher than the Washington Monument. Fountain Park is the home of this water marvel. And as expected, the fountain can be seen for many miles. So drop a coin and make a wish, because that's your Arizona Highways postcard from Fountain Hills. Target shooting. When you live in the West, most Western state, it is a rite of passage. So, as I do when I'm not familiar with something, I plunge right in. But I don't mind telling you, I'm a little nervous about it. My new friend Mark here is a very brave man because he's actually going to stand next to me when I have a gun in my hand. <laughs> not a problem. And given the fact that I have never had a gun in my hand, um, we don't know what kind of a 
aim I'm going to have. We're at Ben Avery. Play Target Center. Okay, so here I go. I put my earplugs in. Glasses. Glasses on, all right, glasses on. Let's go. All right, let's go this way, step into my office. <laughs> this is a nice office, got a good view. Of course. Do this with your arms. All right, that pocket right there, that's where we put the gun, okay? okay. Put it right there. Reach up and grab this. Oh. Right there. Right you, here? Oh, yep. Put your other hand where mine is. Okay. Put out that way. Put your face on the stock. What's that? Perfect. What, what's the stock? Just lean into it a little bit. Now, can you see down that? Well, as you can see down that, yeah. it's just reference. I don't want you looking at that. I want you looking out. Kind of okay. keep your head erect. There you, that's perfect. Okay. That is perfect. Wow, this is heavy. Yep. Right? Now, what's going to happen is going to come out of there. You're going to follow it up. Put your head on the stock. Imagine you've got your finger and you're pointing at it. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to be looking right through there or looking at no. the target. What, what I want you to look at is the target. The shotgun is totally different than a rifle. With a rifle, you look at the sights. With a shotgun, you look at the target. This is a shotgun. Yes, ma'am. I can't believe it. My hands Here are shaking. Go. Pull. Target one looks like a chocolate ding dong. Whizzes right by me. Up, 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 bang. Almost. Oh, you were that close. I was? Yes, I was. you were. Oh, my oh gosh. the wind drifted it. That wow. was the wind. Okay. Pull. Target two and strike two. Dang it. That's so my fault. Off. That's so my fault. Off. Here it comes. Right up, 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 bang. Just like that. You got two in a row, kid. What did you think about that? I think you're doing well. Beginner's luck. I'll take a break. You want to do another one? No, let's do another one. I want to roll. A lot of women like the thrill of shooting, so much so that Ben Avery Clay Target Center has set up the Desert Rose Program. The Desert Rose Program is targeted to women. However, I don't discriminate. If guys want to come out and shoot with the ladies, I'll let them. It's an introduction to clay shooting. $10 yeah. pays for three sessions. Ready? Your introduction session is basically we get you comfortable with the gun. Bang. OK. Hold. It's the using the concentration so I don't think about other things that are going on. I come out, I have a game, and um, I, it's just the concentration, I think. A lot of it is the, the camaraderie that you have with the other players and the other people. They are so patient. There's so many women that come out on, and there's so many different levels that they start at. Tracy Kwetniak first came out here with friends, and then she had such a good time, she started coming by herself. I went from Desert Rose, and I now do hunting up in Colorado for pheasants and chucker and run dogs, and so it's good. It's giving me definitely an edge up there. As for me, well, I'm never going to be Annie Oakley, but I could play the role of Annie Get Your Gun and be mm, somewhat believable. My hands have stopped shaking, wow. and I am I having a pretty it. good time shooting down it. these clay targets just off an Arizona highway. High on a hill overlooking the old mining town of Jerome sits a gourmet food and wine gem. It is a quirky little restaurant. Uh, we started out in 2001. Shoestring and a prayer, basically, and we have a lot of really amazing people that's helped create what it is today. Co-owner Jennifer Passage says the Asylum's new American cuisine menu is the creation of her husband, executive chef Rich Passage, who keeps things simple but good. He always talks about food as nourishment. It's very, very important to him to uh, get that concept across to people. Food is much more than just something to put in your gullet while you're walking through town for the afternoon. It should be an experience and it should be something that makes you feel good. It needs to be quality. Along with the wonderful food, you will find a wine list that rivals any of the ones you'll see on the New York or LA restaurant scene. The Wine Spectator Award, we won nine years in a row. Um, we, have, we have wines from glass to the magnum. Uh, glasses are wines from around the world, uh, as well as local wines. Some of the grapes are even uh, grown here in, in Jerome. Um, some of the, we also use some of the Arizona wineries, um, Page Springs and uh, 
heavily in the lead and all, all those things. Um, a lot of people come here for the wines to complement the food, of course. Wine Spectator magazine has named the Asylum one of the top restaurants in the world for wine lovers. And it's been named winner of the North American Restaurants Association prestigious award of excellence. And if you're lucky enough to get a table by a window, your dining experience will be complete. The views are stunning. Uh, when you look over the Verde, you, you look over the entire Verde Valley. In the distance, you see the Mogollon Rim, which on clear days you can see all the way to New Mexico, and you can also see the San Francisco Peaks up in Flagstaff area. So the views are extensive, breathtaking. Uh, when the sun goes down, the lights light up in Cottonwood and Sedona, and it becomes like a little light, bright board. It's really beautiful, and it's a great experience. As I said. The Asylum Restaurant serves up new American cuisine. But the staff says the food is really something else entirely. American soul food. It's, just, it's not really, you know, the typical soul food that you think of. It's an American, we call it American soul food because it's good for your soul, nourishes your soul, and keeps you happy and healthy and lively. Grand Falls is like the Grand Canyon. It's hidden. You don't see its grandeur until you reach the edge. 45 miles east of Flagstaff, just inside the Navajo Nation, it is one of the littlest known wonders of Arizona. When Arizona has had a very wet winter, it's like a chocolate milk Niagara Falls there. Although it's not as wide as Niagara, it is taller, with a vertical relief of 190 feet. What makes Grand Falls so unique is that it's a part-time waterfall, a seasonal site for the ages. So if you've got a hankering to explore Arizona's skyways, no matter how big or small the engine or no engine at all, you've got so many choices on how you want to take in the wild blue yonder. Thanks everyone so much for joining us. I'm Robin Sewell and we'll see you on the next Arizona Highway.